Greetings and welcome to the Relationality Podcast. I'm Dr. Gwendolyn Henry, your host and certified relationship coach. In each episode, I will be sharing real and relative truths on love and dating to help prepare and position Christian singles for a fulfilling romantic relationship. So ladies and fellas, if you are dating and waiting, you've come to the right place. So get ready to grow and lay some groundwork for a successful marriage. Hey y'all, we are back with another episode called Believer Be Attitudes. Attitude is one of the main things that can cause a lot of friction in a relationship. And some people just can't get along, all because one person needs an attitude adjustment. Or in some cases, it can be both persons who needs an attitude adjustment. In Matthew 5, chapter 5, verse 1 through 11, Jesus preached this message as one of his famous messages that he preached on the mountaintop about attitude. And that was really the summary of Jesus' message. Basically, to summarize it all up, it's having the proper attitudes. And this message was so vital that Jesus intentionally addressed it to his in crowd, meaning his disciples. He focused his intention and and his message to them. And this is a great relationship principle because Jesus had the opportunity to teach it to the masses, but he specifically gave it to his followers. And I believe he did this because don't nobody else has the right be attitude We as believers, we should have the right attitude. And these attitude attributes are relevant in relationships. And I like Dr. Miles Moreau, God rest his soul. He's gone to be with the Lord, but he called them the attitudes to be. And so I'm going to stretch it even further and say the attitudes to be in relationships as believers, because that's what we're talking about, right? In relationality in this podcast, we're talking about relationships. So these are the attitudes to be in your relationships. And as believers, we should not model the world. We should have a different behavior and our attitude should be different. And Jesus gave his disciples a charge, and it's the great commission of the church to wait for the Holy Spirit to come so that they could be witnesses. The key word is be, be witnesses, because sometimes people get so caught up in the doing that they fail to be. But we are human beings, not human doings. We are human beings, and God wants us to be a healthy representation of him. And that means we must have the right attitudes to be in our relationships. And so in saying all of that, love is not something that you do, it's something that you be. And this is our constitution as citizens of of God's kingdom, individually and relationally. And so I'm going to run through them really quick and how they relate to relationships because each beatitude pronounces a blessing upon the person and then it explains the blessing itself. And so for the sake of this subject, as it relates to relationships, I would say that each of these pronounces a blessing upon the individuals in a relationship. And as a result, they will have a blessed relationship. And so the first beatitude is blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, this is talking about not being self-sufficient and self-reliant like that, you know, I'm self-made attitude that's going around in culture. I'm self-made. That's not so good because it's a form of self-exaltation. Knowing, seeking and relying on God's grace and everything and for everything is the way to go, no matter where you are or where you are on your way to. This heart posture will open the heavens over you and your relationship. Number two, the second beatitude is blessed are those that mourn. Now, in a relationship, there will be tears and some mourning, especially on the lady side. (laughs) Hashtag LOL women, because we are emotional. 
So at some point, your lady is going to cry. You know, women, we're, we're going to cry. But men also do mourn. And mourning is not talking about bereavement per se, although you will have that too, you know, because we lose loved ones, right? And we mourn, we cry. But here we are talking about repentance. It's having to die to yourself. That will cost you some tears. I mean, even Jesus cried out, the Bible says, on the cross. But thank God he will comfort those whose heart is committed to him. Number three. Beatitude number three, blessed are the meek. Now, meekness is not weakness. So it's not about being a coward. It's strength under control. It's talking about self-discipline strength. So God honors humility and humility will provoke God's handiwork in your relationship where you will experience kingdom blessings here on earth. Number four, blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness. Seeking right standing with God, it will produce ultimate satisfaction. And when you seek to pursue righteousness passionately in your relationship by keeping God at the center, your relationship will be so satisfying. Beatitude number five, blessed are the merciful. Mercy does matter to God and mercy should be a matter in your relationship. And it's talking about being compassionate in your relationship and not cruel. And you never know when you may need a helping hand or some mercy medicine. So God wants us to be merciful. Be attitude number six. Blessed are the pure in heart. You want a clean conscience in your heart because God is all about the heart and your motives. And you definitely want this in your relationship. Having unmixed motives, walking in unity will provoke God's presence in your relationship. And it's nothing like the presence of God. Oh my gosh. I mean, you will be a power couple when your hearts are pure before God and pure before each other. Notice it doesn't say perfect, but pure. Be attitude number seven. Blessed are the peacemakers. This is talking about those who actively intervene to make peace. Because the natural approach, that sinful nature, is to watch strife from the sideline. And this is really important in a relationship because you want to keep and maintain peace. You want to go to whatever extreme to keep the peace, right? Because people seek revenge, but as God's sons and daughters, we should be makers of peace. And you definitely want to have a peaceful relationship. There's nothing like having peace. Be added to number eight, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. There is a suffering that comes with doing right because I don't know what it is. People hate success. People will hate or be jealous of you and your choice for right relationships because light exposes darkness and some people don't want to be exposed. They don't like exposure. They don't like integrity, but God rewards those who endure this suffering for righteousness sake. They will experience kingdom blessings now in this life and forever. You will experience kingdom blessings in your relationship when you guys do what's right. Be added to number nine. Blessed are those who are insulted and persecuted for Christ's sake. Now, this one seems a little similar to the preceding one, the one we just talked about, except this persecution is for the sake of Christ. It's for being on his side and being loyal to him because our loyalty should be to God first. And some people get mad when you choose to follow Christ, even in your relationships. They will throw insults and talk about you because you choose to follow Christ and not the ways of the world. But bless Jesus said, will you be when you are Christ committed? When your relationship, you and your mate is Christ committed. So these are the beatitudes that you want to have in your relationships. They are the attitudes to be. And Jesus said, when you have these attitudes, you will be blessed. And so will your relationships. 
Thanks so much for joining me this week. Before you go, make sure you share and subscribe to the podcast at GwendolynGlobal.com slash podcast. So you'll get all the new episodes as soon as they drop. And one more thing. I want to know what's on your heart. So hit me up with any ideas or questions you have on love and dating. I'm happy to share some of the top requests and respond to some top questions in upcoming episodes. Thanks again for joining me. I'm Dr. Gwendolyn Henry. Meet me next week for another episode of Relationality.